is uh, our joint venture. And to be honest, it's a big pleasure for our company to have such like joint venture okay. like Mr. Sana. Okay. And uh, he's uh, like, I can say actually, he's one of the even but to say the profession, the most professional actually agent in real estate market in Georgia. What I uh, saw when I could actually I can climb the wall team. So uh, I asked him to uh, uh, actually attend this meeting and give us a presentation about his company and just share some you know experience that he has in this market. And yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I want to say teaching is not what I'm good at. I'm good at closing deals. And uh, I've been asked to come here uh, to just present how to close your first deal as soon as possible without needing a lot of time, without needing a lot of experience because uh, most people who join, uh, they have trouble closing their first deal and they were not taught how to close their first deal. And it may seem like it's an impossible task to do, but actually, you're literally just one call away from closing that deal. So why should you be a real estate agent? Why are you guys, why did you guys choose to be a real estate agent? Because it's fun work, field, you get to see the place and mm -hmm. stuff. Good to introduce with people, interact with different people. Exactly. And how about you? Yeah, I think this is the field that you never stop learning. Uh -huh. Every day you find something new, new way, new approach in many different uh, tools, how to sell and how to grow, not mm -hmm. only in sales, but in life also. Definitely. And how about you? Uh, also, it is a new field for me and I need to provide you more skills Uh-huh. Okay. So, uh, yeah. What the best thing about being a real estate agent is that you are learning about sales, marketing, and finance all at the same time. Okay, so sales because you have to go there and learn how to close the deal, how to negotiate, how to sell yourself as a business, as you are a business now by yourself. And uh, marketing because you're going to have to learn how to market the property online, offline, on the advertisements and finance because, well, you, eat, you, you only eat when you kill. So you're going to have to learn how to control your finances, how to budget how to live and survive without a salary because salary is like a, it's a comfort zone. Okay, I don't think uh, to grow, I think it's better you don't have a salary. I actually think you, if you even work for free for somebody, even without commission, it even teaches you even more. But in this case, having commission instead of salary, let's suppose you wanna uh, purchase a house, $40,000. If you had a salary of, you know, the average salary is $300. If you, if you were to work, spend your time for money, you'd have to work 120 months, 10 years to get that $40,000 house. And that's if you don't even spend that salary. But in a real estate agent, all it takes is 20 deals. 20 deals, maybe less, maybe five deals, maybe 10 deals. 10, five deals and you have your own house. That house can give you $350 a month. You know, so that's... This is how, how and why I started. I, I realized, okay, I have a goal. I want to make this amount of money. But the jobs that were available for me, it wasn't going to give me that amount. I was going to be like 155 years old until I get where I want to be. So I said, okay, I see people out there, agents, they were killing it. They were selling big apartment buildings, getting $400,000 in one night. Crazy. What, what did they do? Nothing. It was their first year, second year as an agent. So I said, okay, that's what I want. I don't want to trade my time for money. I want to be my own business, be flexible, meet new people, go to different places. Imagine, think about it. You're meeting all these different type of people, networking, meeting so many people that come from different fields. So that's how I started. That's why I started. And... Uh, you are just one deal away. One deal away from a completely different life. One deal away from being a completely different person. And just one deal away. When I first came here in Georgia, it took me two months to close my first deal. And my first deal gave me $4,200. That's 12 months of a normal Georgian salary. 12 months. I closed 
I put a listing online, didn't do anything special, put a listing online, four days later I got a call, Nicolas Pasielashvili, he went, he bought a house from me, and my commission was $4,200. Simple as that, I didn't do anything special, nothing. All I did was take some pictures, put it online, write a description, show them the apartment, that's it. That's all it takes, anybody can do it. Anyone can do it. Now, here are the three simple secrets that I've laid down here that has helped me close deals as much as possible. Secret one is list well and list often, okay? This is how to build an automated machine that will keep bringing you customers, potentially money-winning deals. So uh, you wanna get calls as much as possible. Secret two is follow up. So you're gonna learn here how to follow up in a really easy way, like a professional, okay? The best agents are not professional talkers. It's not about saying magic words, it's just being professional stalkers, always following up. And secret three is how to master and handle objections. My wife doesn't like it. It's not the right time right now. I don't know, but that other apartment. Oh, but the price is too high. Oh, the price is too low. The apartment is too big. This is how to use any of these excuses as a matter to close. Some people just say, oh, okay, okay then, bye. But all these excuses, all it takes is just say, I agree with you. Just sign here. And they sign. So, secret one, list well and list often. Okay, so a lot of people online, what are they doing? They're taking people's photos, old, really high, like low quality photos, they post them again. There's 20 photos, they're all this, 20 listings, all the same apartments, and they don't even write anything there anymore. All it takes is just one minute to, to get professional photos. All it takes is just one minute to write a nice description, you know, uh, letting the people who are shopping online, online late at night looking for properties to read something, you know? So many people don't do that. So if you wanna stand out from all these listings, all these fake listings, bad listings and everything, all you just need to do is spend one minute extra, two minutes extra, write a nice paragraph on why this place is a good investment for them or why it's a good home for them, okay? Um, and uh, my target when I first started was to create 15 listings per week. If you can create 15 listings per week, that gives you maybe in a month 60 listings. And if you get into the habit of looking for these listings and getting listings, uh, you would probably get in, in this market maybe two to seven calls per week. Let's just say half of those are viewings and easily you'll be closing four to five deals per week. If you get 15 listings per week, you get into that habit of getting these listings per week. Then you know, I have, sometimes I have five listings on, I get a call and I close the deal. So the more listings, the better. And uh, strive for exclusivity. If you think like the if you see an owner who posted an advertisement online and you're the first person who called, call the owner, say you'd like to help him sell the apartment, you're getting clients usually and foreigners, whatever, and when they accept, tell them to take their advertisement off. Take it off, let me handle it now, let me worry about it now, uh, you relax, sit back, and what this does is that nobody else is gonna duplicate these listings, and you can tell them, well, if you have yours on and I have mine on and you have 10 other agents who post your listings, the people who are buying are gonna think something's wrong with the apartment. They're not gonna like an apartment that's been listed 20 times, different prices too, they put some lower to get the better call. And just tell them to take it off, it's gonna help you. Convince them. So, list, secret two is follow up. Not enough people follow up. The only time they call the owner is when they wanna get the listing and when they have a viewing. But it's not, it's not enough, you know, actually 2% of the deals are closed in the first contact. You're gonna have to be very lucky. It happens quite often actually, but just think about it. If you talk to the owner once or to the buyer, 2% chance you're gonna close it in that deal. After the second or third contact, maybe eight to 15% chance. After the third or fourth, fifth contact, you have a 25% chance to closing that deal. All the deals are done and closed in the 8th to 12th contact. So you're going to have to keep in touch with the guys. As soon as you meet them, for example, day zero, as soon as you meet the person, five seconds later, send them a text. Thank you for your time. Call me at, this is the, your, your number. Literally, even, the, even though you just met them, bye-bye, go 
text. This is one way you're now you've already entered. You've day zero. So five first five minutes, send them a text. Same day, the same day, one hour later, just give them a call. Thank you for the opportunity. It was a pleasure working with you. People don't do this. So what did I miss? Any questions? I'm trying to improve. Everything was everything perfect? On a scale from one to ten. How did I do? Okay? Who else would be involved in this process if you're buying an apartment? Now you know, is it the wife? Is it the kid? Is it the cousin? It's not even him, it's the brother. You need to know like who's gonna be involved. Um, this is super, super important. The day one, 24 hours after the contact, you can just say, hey, I have a great idea, would like to set up a time with you, either to meet in person or video call. Okay, or hey, I have a great idea, call me back. Text, email, voice message. Use all of these tools, emails, WhatsApp, Viber, Telegram. If they have it, use all. Go, go in from all, all ways, okay? Day two, 48 hours after, write a handwritten letter if you can. By text, email, nice dear, da da da, da 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 da. Thanks for connecting. I have some information I wanna send you over our recent conversation. See how you're just infiltrating Every day he's in, you're, he, he, you're there, okay? It's not like you disappeared, okay? 48 hours later, text them, email, call, voice message, anything. Want to be sure I have the right address, I have something special to send you. Even if you can, if you know their office, go to their office. Day three, video text, email again. Hey, Georgi, I want to put a face to the name, give me a call back, da 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 da, da. My management team and I met some, uh, met and we have great ideas for you. You go show them a couple more options or one option or, you know, uh, if, if you're talking about um, a buyer, it's better not to show him more than three options. Uh, I like to just show him one option. So I, I don't want them because people who come, come to you and they want to buy something, they have trouble deciding for themselves what they want. So you're going to just have to help them go to the, like, push, like, Go to one, one straight direction. You don't want to confuse them more. And you say, okay, there's this, 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 this. The guy's going to get confused and he's not going to do anything. The point is to just lead him to one direction, a straight path, to one decision. He says, no, good. Show him another one after. But if you show all at the same time, he's going to be confused even more. And uh, day four, meet him again. Personal visit. I want to jump in the cab and meet you with you and your wife or kid, partner, whatever, for coffee or lunch or dinner or at an event or your office. Meet him again. Just day four. Day five. I thought of you. I was thinking of you and saw your new website, post or ad or story or whatever. Congrats. Great job. By the way, you can call me back with who your, you know, if he was advertising, who your creative is or whatever it is he's doing, whatever job he's in or anything. Now you're also not just an agent now you you guys are even more than agents now you know you you've you've met met the person he, he feels like he knows you already right day 5 event offer we have a great event coming it's like the weekend now we want to invite you and your business to attend now you're all mixing businesses two together it's not just personal it's not just the agent to buyer or agent just seller now you've even mixed both the businesses together realty guide and whatever they're doing Day 14, information links. You saw maybe something on Georgia today. You saw the news on Azerbaijan and uh, Armenia. And you want to now just, hey, I, I read this. I thought of you. Call me um, if I can help about da 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 da, da by the way. Just anything. Keep finding of things, uh, ways to keep in touch with them. And it goes on. All the way to day 300. It keeps going on. Just never let go of that person. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, maybe he never bought from you, but... Hey, my cousin wants to buy, or hey, my friend just came in town, or hey, and he's gonna just throw your clients to you guys. You know, give him a gift, day 90. Give him a special gift, anything. If it's Georgian anniversary, send him some chocolates, kachapuri, whatever, it doesn't matter. But keep in touch with them, not enough people keep in touch, okay? Some people never even make the first call after, so. Follow-up mistakes, not making the call in the first place, okay? You're gonna think about maybe millions of reasons why you shouldn't call him. Be unreasonable and just call him, even if you don't know what to say, just call him. Just, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what you say, it just communication is what matters. And uh, not making enough calls is another mistake. 
Doesn't, again, it doesn't really matter what you're going to say. He's in a meeting, call him. He says, I can't talk right now, call him. He says, I'm busy, I'm sick, call him. Just keep calling him. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Calls not on a regular basis is another thing. People don't call regularly to people. They, and they just lose contact, they lose touch. The next is waiting too long to follow up. This is another big issue. People, uh, they don't follow up. The, the guy, you, you showed him an apartment, he says, okay, I'll talk to my wife. And you're just waiting, did he talk yet? Next day, did he talk yet? Next day, did he talk yet? Next day, did he talk yet? He went and some other agent went and showed him one apartment and he closed them. So literally, again, you wanna call him every, as much as you can, okay? And lack of variety in reasons to call. Some people, again, just call only if they have a viewing, only if they have a prospective client, but you're supposed to have so many different reasons to call and use all the different means, SMS, WhatsApp, everything, as infiltrate from all sides. No clear purpose in the call is a different, is another reason. Some people call without a purpose. So know what you wanna call them for, know what the intention is. Do you wanna set appointment? Do you wanna get an exclusivity? Do you wanna uh, take him somewhere? Do you wanna talk about the offer he threw and what the seller thinks. Some people call and at the end there was like no conclusion. You wanted a viewing, but you guys didn't even talk about viewings. You wanted to show them an option, but you guys didn't even talk about options, nothing. So make sure you always know why you're calling. Make sure you know the purpose of why you're calling. Not leaving a message. If he doesn't answer, that doesn't mean he's not interested. That doesn't mean not, you, you have to leave a message, okay? You called, he didn't answer. Hey, I just, call, I just called you, call me back. That's all, that's all. Leave a message. Even, after, even if you did call, even if you did call, you guys did speak, leave another message again, okay? Not collecting critical data for future sales. So if you're speaking to somebody who's not in Georgia yet and they're talking about what they want, take note of it. Maybe first at paper, then in your own spreadsheet or Excel or whatever you want to use to store data to know what he's looking for, why he's buying, what's his intention, is it for residency, is it for uh, investment? Because believe it or not, one week later, you're not going to remember who he is or what it is if you're not following up and if, or if he's not here. But if he arrives and you don't know what this is, what, his, what he's looking for and you forget, and he says, I thought I told you I want... He'll immediately think, okay, this person wasn't listening to me the first time. So write down everything from the very beginning and keep, keep track of it because you want to come back to it after two months, three months, six months. Sometimes, you know, I, I, I met somebody uh, the first time and he doesn't buy anything from me, but nine months later he comes and he buys something from me. So just because, just because you met the person once and he showed him an apartment and he says, no, I don't want anything. It doesn't mean it's over. To be honest, it just began. Remember, the eighth to 12th contact is when you actually close the deal for sure when they've met you. Because not, no, no agents are doing this. No agents are keeping contact with them. So you will stand out as being the person who has kept in contact with them. No agents in Georgia, no agents in the world, they keep in contact with these people. So you'll stand out immediately. 100 agents call them, one keeps in touch. It's easy. Not asking for referrals, okay? Um, hey, can you help me? Uh, hey, can you help me uh, uh, share your friends about me? Is not the right way to do it, okay? Or hey, um, you know, the, the right way to do it is who else do you know that would like to benefit from my service? That's the right way to do it. So it's not like, you're not asking them, give me some clients. You're saying, who else do you know that can benefit from me? You know? And not organized to store data. That's another mistake. So remember how to store all these calls, all these names. Have your own way to store them. Save them. Owners, foreigners, locals, local buyers, local sellers, local renters. These people that even if you rent a place to somebody, you know that one year later, 
he's either going to stay there or he's going to move. So two months before he, it's expiring, three months before it's expiring, call him, hey, how's the house going? Everything well? Do you need another place to move? There's plenty of new opportunities, much better. The rents dropped. Da, 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 da. I can get you the same apartment, even bigger. Kick him out of the place. Just change the place for him. Go to another place. You get the commission again. So keeping track of all these people you've rented, you can even make them change and not stay in that one-year contract. Go to another contract. Go to another apartment. So just because you close the deal, it doesn't mean they're not going to buy another one. It doesn't mean they're not going to rent another one. So... Secret three is master handling objections. So objections have locations and categories. You can uh, hear them object or complain during the greeting, during the demonstration, the viewings, during the proposal, during negotiations, in the close, after the close. You guys might be right there about to finish and he just says, no, I'm not going to do it. So all these times, you're going to have to learn how to Handle it. Because if you don't handle it, you're just going to accept it. You're going to say, okay, sir, and he's gone. But most of the time, it's just complaints. So even on the call and emails. Objections can be about price. It can be about terms, contract, product, timing, the company, you, competition, buyer's uncertainty, third-party data. You might have read another article and it's not as good as what you've said it is. Confusions and lack of information. So step one is listen. A lot of people try to go against the guy and say, no, it's not like that, I, I, it's the best. And they completely just go 360 and they don't uh, appreciate it. So you just say, listen well and listen to duplicate. Everything he's saying, just say it again to him, okay? And just say, let me write this down. Okay, okay, please tell me. Ah, I got it, I got it, what else? Tell me more. He goes even deeper and deeper, thanks for sharing. Tell me everything. Use all these words to get as much out of them and don't say anything, don't interrupt them. Even if you think of something nice to say, write it down, don't say it. Just take as much information, write it down. And next thing you wanna do is acknowledge. Say, you're right, I agree with you. Even if you don't, I agree with you. I can see that, I'm in total agreement. I feel the same way, I get it. Third, you isolate. You make sure that's the only excuse that he has. So what are your other concerns? Let's see if he has anything else. What else bothers you? Do you have any other reasons for not moving forward with closing this deal? Do you have any other concerns? And let's see, is it just because his wife? Or is it just because of that price? Is there anything else? You want to kind of see if that's the only excuse. Once you found out exactly what they are, you can validate. You can check, is this a real excuse or is it not a real excuse? And you can just say, that wouldn't keep you from buying, would it? What's your real objection? What is this really about here? What's your real concern? There's gotta be something else. You know, he might say, oh, it's my wife, da, 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 da. When you reach this part, he's gonna be like, actually, it's the price. I can't afford it. He's just trying to save face. He's putting his wife there as, as a shield. He, he might just be trying to save face. So here is when you validate, you isolate, you only know now the, the exact reason, and now you try to make this reason not important and not valid. So. You have to find out, is it a real objection or is it just a complaint, okay? Uh, if the person gets a complaint during closing and you just say, oh, okay, I, okay, I guess not, he, he will not close the deal because you've made it easy for him not to, uh, to, to go back. But if you just see it as a complaint and just agree with him, oh, I understand the price is expensive, but to be honest, you should be happy that you can afford this top, top apartment. Uh, not many people can. Uh, and anyway, price for value, you're getting much more just sign here. That's it. You didn't say, oh, okay, I understand. I look for something cheaper. You just, you, you made him feel good that he's buying something this expensive. And that's all. So, viewings objections. You know, if you try to appoint a viewing the customer, he was interested once and the next day he's just saying, oh, I don't have the time right now, da, da, da. People just say, okay. Instead, you can say, I know how valuable your time is. I promise not to waste it. Allow me the courtesy of five minutes and I'll show you something important. And the guy who says, I don't have time, I'm like, okay, sure. You neutralized his stance. 
Next one is, I don't know what I want. This is how most people come to you. So you have to say, if you'd know, what do you think it would be? You know? Simple as that. You've, you've now, you've helped him really just force what he, what he wants. Next one, I don't know what I want. Number two, I understand. What are you sure you don't want? If you start backwards and figure it out, what they don't want, you'll find out what they do want. So I say, well, I don't want uh, to pay expensive service fee every month. Or I don't want an old, old elevator. Um, some will say, well, I want, uh, you know, so, so you kind of just, you take out what they want, you take out what they don't want. What streets do you like? What streets do you not like? Okay, great. Does it have to be near a school? How many meters? Some people don't, they, they don't want to be next to the bus station. Some people want to be next to the bus station. So it's all about finding out what they do want, what they don't want. And what generates buyers' objections? What makes them get these blocks in their head? Fear, uncertainty, not knowing what's gonna happen, misinformation, information, lack of information, mistakes in the past, upbringing, well, valid or legitimate, um, whether it's like a real excuse, a real objection or not. It could also actually, the guy actually really can't, you know. Uh, so, list of buyer's fears is wasting time. Making a mistake. Oh man. <laughs> Take, being taken advantage of. They're very, very paranoid that you might just, you know, take advantage of them and take their um, money. Looking bad to others. They don't want to look bad to others. Um, oh man. I'm just gonna put them all here. Okay. Fear of wasting your time, not worth your time, fear of pressure and fear of being followed up. Some people, they just came to see an apartment and they want to be left alone. Now you're like messaging them the next day and hey, what happened? What did you decide? What did you decide? Some people do that. What did you decide? Tell me, you want it, you want it, you want another one? And they don't like it, they get scared, okay? Um, and fear of wasting your time is another big one. A lot of them, they appreciate that you've come there to show them the apartment and they're kind of, they're very, very scared of, uh, saying no to you. They don't want to say no. So they say, okay, I'll think about it. I'm going to get back to you. And, uh, you know, uh, this is with the big one. So you have to make them know that. It's done. This part is done. This part is done. So how to handle buyer's fears? Communication. That's it. Talking with them. Not enough agents talk to them. So just communication. That's all. That's how you actually understand what are they afraid of? And secrets to handling objections is stay in communication and be willing to ask hard questions. Hard questions like, why haven't you done this already? What's taking you so long? Have you ever done something like this before? Have you ever purchased a house before? Is it your first time? What's your real concern? If I resolve all your concerns, would you make a decision to buy? If I handle everything, are you in position to make a decision? Okay, other than yourself, who needs to be involved? Is it your wife? Is it your partner? Is it your brother? Is it your cousin? Next question would say, if I found you the perfect apartment right now, how soon would you be able to make the deal? Believe me, some people call, they're very, very interested. When you ask this question, they'll say, oh, January next year. So if you don't ask this question, you'll be looking for his apartments today when you can actually look for it later. You know, so here you'll be able to know, is it urgent for you to do this today? If he says, well, as soon as you find me the perfect apartment, I'd say we need four or five days. Cash is ready in my account. Or some will say, okay, I need to get finance approved. It will take me around two to three weeks. So you're getting some dates now. You're getting maybe five calls a day. You need to know which one are you going to focus on. The law of probability. The secret to closing deals is the law of probability. So... The more listings you have, the more calls you'll get. The more calls you'll get, the more viewings you get. The more viewings you get, the more chances you have of closing. The more you follow up, the more chances you have of closing. So the way you can make generate money, maybe 10 deals 
a month, 20 deals a month even, okay, is the law of probability. You have a lot of listings. Now, people on my home, Dajee, they do it wrong. They, they posted maybe 100 properties. They've lost the number of 20, 40 of them. They just keep renewing them. So they try to get calls. They get the call. And they lure them to the office. Oh, yes, it's available. Come to the office. They come here. It's not available. And they say, can I show you something else? So this is not the right way to do it. The right way to do it is to know, keep, con- keep uh, track of all the numbers. Keep track of all the people. And always follow up and have a lot of listings online and quality listings. Your pictures, nice descriptions. If you're in the top of the mountain, the first this question of the description would be like and would be like would you like to live around nature oxygen and sound of birds and squirrels and wake up in the morning like this? and suddenly the person buying it or reading it for tenants he likes that or it's ideal for write down what it's good for who it's good for ideal for a couple ideal for university students ideal for freelancers Ideal for a home office. Also write what it's uh, good for. Another thing I just remembered is uh, when you go to a property, you don't need to go tell them, okay, this is the bathroom. This is the bedroom. This is the, they know. They know. So you don't even need to do that. You just want to just walk them around and say, what did you like about this property? Do you, you want to go forward? Okay. A lot of people, they, they, they like the property. They just, they just don't know the steps forward. They don't know even how to ask you what's the next step and they just hold it in themselves and go home and nothing happens. You could actually close them right there. Okay, so let's say you do like this property. Here's what we have to do next. Because remember, he's scared. He has a fear of uncertainty. Maybe it's his first time. So first step we do is we go back to the office. You can put a deposit of $100. Try to get that deposit because they might want to take that apartment now, but five hours there, they might not. You take that $100, they have to come in because they don't want to lose the hundred dollars. So take that deposit, show them the steps. Step one is this, then you go to the office and next day we can go to the justice house. It takes around three hours. It's on your name, very easy. Suddenly now he he sees the way. It's not dark anymore. And most likely he will close it. Thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. That's my Instagram. If you guys want to follow me on social media. I also specialize in helping foreign investors invest here safely, profitably. And I also show other people how to be investors and how to invest and uh, how to purchase their houses and not houses, investments. Thank you so much. Any questions? Yeah, if you have any questions, just feel free to talk. Thank you. Yeah, one one thing has been in my mind. You said you showed that that buyer two or three flats. Right, uh, you know me as a buyer. I would see many agents. So while I show them two, three flats, and they keep messaging him, send him uh, calls, message him. Another agent no is problem. showing him around, and he finds the perfect idea. He takes the house from the other, other agent. From the very beginning, you tell him, listen, you don't need to call all the agents, because if you do call the all agents and they're all looking for that one bedroom you want. Everybody's gonna call the same owner, and the owner is not gonna negotiate. He's gonna be like, "Whoa, it's it's Friday. I'm getting so many customers." When it's just one guy, so you tell him from the very beginning. If you have a lot of agents, uh, you're not gonna get a good deal because they're all gonna call the same people. We're all looking at the same information. So tell him you just need one person that does the job right, and you're fine. And he's gonna be like, "Oh, I'm not gonna get a good price." Oh, it's not gonna be good. Good for negotiation. Yeah, but the, the thing is, why don't you show him many flats and you look the best one for him? Like he goes, like, yeah, this is the best flat I want. It's better to show one by one. He says yes or no, then show him another one. Yes or no, then show him another one. Yes or no, you know. If he says no, great. What would you like to see more of? What would you like to see less of? And then show him the next one. But if you show him ten at the beginning, he's not going to be able to decide. Okay, maximum is three. And that's if you show the best one last. Okay, you show a really bad one, he's ruined this day. You show him the middle one, which is something okay. You show him the last one, it's the best. And he should say, yes, I want it. But I like to go one, just try to take them through one path. He wants it, he doesn't want it. Great, next one.
he, he doesn't know? Okay, why don't you know? What is it about? Then you find him exactly what he wants. Um, and, uh, you know, if they call you, you're speaking to him, and he says at the end, I'll think about it. I'll call you back. I'll think about it. You can just hold them right there. Sir, usually when people tell me I'll think about it, they are either too scared to just tell me they don't want it or they don't, they're afraid of wasting my time. What is this really about? What does it take for me and you to do business today? A lot of people, they don't want to sound desperate. Why? You should be desperate. You should be serious. You should be desperate. They should know that you are serious about your job. They should know that you are hungry. Okay? Not the opposite. Like, oh, I'm going to play it cool. And he, I called him. He didn't answer. I'm not going to message him back. They think it looks too desperate. No. Be desperate. They will, they will like it. They will say, okay, this guy, he is hungry. He wants to get me this apartment. He's doing everything it takes. I trust him. Even owners, so even owners, you tell them, take the listings off, don't deal with too many agents, because it's gonna give the wrong impression that there's something wrong with your apartment. That's why so many people need to help you. You don't need that much help. Posting one listing is enough. Really, one listing is enough. Okay, great. Yes. Anything else? Well, when you said that uh, you should communicate with them, like daily or you know, like an hour and five minutes after a call. And then you said that sometimes people don't like this uh, much communication. How you should know that this person is like the second one that they don't like? Whether they, whether they like it or not, you should message them anyway. Okay? Uh, because what you're doing is you, you want to make, make him see you as an agent first. And then you want to stand out from the other agents, and then you kind of become like his friend. Because he's seeing your name so often, he's seeing, it's, 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 it suddenly becomes like, okay, everyone else, like, they, they suddenly feel like they don't want to work with another person because you've already been communicating. So, uh, the first thing that should come to his mind is you when he thinks of apartment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, for example, when you think of fast food, first thing comes McDonald's because they did enough marketing. Mm -hmm. They promoted themselves. Mm -hmm. So when you also do your hard work, first thing that they think about buying an apartment, oh, yeah, it's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that's the first thing that you come. Yeah, yeah. And not thinking about just buying it. Yes, exactly. And you know, from the very beginning, if you let them know that, hey, it's easier to just work with one person who gets the job right, super. And you know, you can tell them, uh, you don't pay any commission. The seller pays the commission. So mm -hmm. my service to you is actually free. So knowing that, they, they want to choose and work with somebody they like, okay? Just to open them up, it's important to open yes. them up. Sometimes people are, you know, they don't like to talk too much. When, mm -hmm. when you go to the store and I'm just looking at stuff and this uh, consultant comes to me and she says, how may I help you? Sometimes I just, I just ran, even though I wanted to buy something. So it's important how you feel, how you present, because they feel everything. They feel your energy. They feel how you feel about everything. So it's always going to them, this energy. So that's mm -hmm. why it's important they open up with you. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. feel at ease. And yeah. they just, it's this will flow from them. What they want, when they will buy, they will be honest, mm -hmm. I think. They might, they might call another agent and then just be like, wow, oh, what the hell, and go back to you. You know, yeah. or, or they might call another agent and tell you to talk to the agent. Mm -hmm. So when I'm closing deals, when I want to buy a property for myself, I use another agent. I don't close it myself. I use another agent to stay in the middle to do all the negotiations because if I speak to the guy directly and we fight by accident, he, it might become personal. I don't want to sell it to you. So I always use an agent in between. The information goes to him, information comes to me, I get to think about what to say next to the person. So you even, even uh, you could tell the person, like if you want someone to do all the negotiations, especially if they're new, let me do all the negotiations. Or um, if, they're, if they're foreigners, you could just show them why it's important to have an agent if they don't know why. You know, a lot of people, they try to be smart and go behind the agent and try to close the deal themselves and they get ripped off. What the house was 50,000, they got sold 65,000 by the seller. So 
uh, you can also explain to them just because if you try to find the house yourself, it doesn't mean you save 3% commission. The owner is just going to take that commission. Mm -hmm. And the owner doesn't know how to write a contract. How do you know that house hasn't been sold 50 times? So the agent is there to make sure everything is safe, everything's protected, the negotiations, the communication between the buyer and seller. So you're the facilitator. You're helping the buyer make a decision. You're helping the seller sell the home. And uh, believe me, it's one of my favorite things to do, being an agent. Because if you're closing deals, nobody cares what you do. Nobody cares when you come. Believe me, they're not going to care when you come if you're closing deals. And you could, you're, your own, you're your own business. You can do whatever you want. If you're closing, you can do whatever you want. No boss, in no the beginning, yeah, In the beginning, <laughs> maybe they might help you, get you in the routine of how it's... How, how, how an agent should be, what time, da, 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 two, three weeks. But once you close, and you're closing, nobody can tell you what to do. You're your own business. And, uh, you know, maybe you're working on some small deal. Suddenly, next thing you know is a seller wants you to sell his $3 million commercial office in Vajab Shvela. Next thing you know is you found a, someone who wants to buy it. So 3% of 3 million, boom. That's, it, could, it could be as big as that. Or you find a foreign investor who wants to build here. You sell the land, you build the project. You know, so big things happen. You're one big deal away. Um, it's a life changer. I know people who made millions overnight where they thought it was never coming. They never knew it was coming, you know. And you're going to have times where you're going to go deal after deal after deal and nothing's happening there's no deals there's no deals suddenly you're going to close five deals in one week it happens my first time I didn't close for two months and I said okay I, I really like I felt like quitting I said okay I'm gonna at least close one deal get the satisfaction see how it was and then I'll decide if I want to stop two months nothing happened nothing rent sale rent sale everywhere I was going Nothing was happening. I didn't close a deal. Suddenly, when I closed my first deal, I closed seven more that same month. Seven that same month. And I became hooked like a drug. I was like, whoa, this is crazy. I just, one guy, I showed him one apartment. He wanted it. Another time I showed another apartment. He wanted it. All in one go. Like, every single one was the first viewing. One, one, the, and, and never let go of the client. You know, I had this Italian uh, client. She was so hard sending me, like, Telling me, look for a one bedroom, then a studio, then a four bedroom, then a studio, then for sale, then for rent, da 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 da. And I'm just like, I can't do this anymore. I pass it to my friend, my friend, because he speaks, um, they spoke French too, and my friend speaks French. I pass it to my friend, my friend said, ah, I cannot, she's crazy. Pass it back to me. We met the husband, the husband bought two apartments from us, we got around 40,000 dirhams. After that's done, and we helped them rent the place. So we got two, two deals in one time. After just two, two three weeks of showing them stuff so you know it doesn't end there in your first viewing if you follow up with them it most of the off. times it pays off yes and if it doesn't pay off it, and you and you also make you become friends with them you, you have networked you've met all these people in different businesses pay off later. Well, yeah one guy is importing mac macaronis next thing you know you found a guy who's exporting macaronis oh shit you connect the dots you're so so you, you'll see many, many people in different, who've, in different, uh, different businesses. And after a while, you, 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 you are now, you've created like a spider web of all these people who you know what they do, where they come from. And you'll be able to introduce them. And it's the magic of networking. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think it's one of the funnest things ever. You're meeting new people, you're meeting new, you're seeing new apartments, you're learning sales, marketing, finance, accounting, all at the same time. And uh, I don't think there's another job out there in the world that uh, I, I wouldn't even call it a job. Um, 007 agents. I, it's, it's super, super fun. Much better than doing the same thing every day for me. And... Uh, That's that.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Simon. Thanks You're for welcome. Your time. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it. I've heard that a lot as well. Okay. So, uh, we will stay in touch and actually, uh, because as I told you, we are a joint venture. Later, actually, we have uh, so many uh, common projects. Actually, like we will exchange our client with Simon. We already have this system, but we are actually working to improve the mechanism of the work and also. Uh, yeah, we will set up our network with him as soon as possible. We already have it, but we are, we are in a progress. So, thanks, thank you again yeah. for your time. It's really, it was really great. Mm -hmm. That's kind of